Hello and welcome to a brand new Final Cut Pro 10.1 tutorial, this time taking a look at some of the brand new retiming tools inside of the update Final Cut Pro 10.1. So let's start off by creating a clip that has multiple speeds within that same clip and we're going to take a look at how to blend these different speeds more effectively using the new tools. First of all press Command R to show the retime. So let's say we want the pulling up of the car to be really fast and then we want it to be slow for the final second or so. What we want to do is hover over this clip and then press Shift B. And you can see what that's done is that we've still got the same single clip, but now we've got a split in the retime tools. So we can grab this handle here and we can drag this bar so that it goes really fast, which is basically everything the start to this point is being squished down, so we're, we're literally squishing time. And now, unlike in the previous version of Final Cut, you can see we've got this, gre this gray bar over the top. And this is basically a transition bar, so we can stretch this out or we can slow it down, depending on how harsh we want the transition to be between the fast and slow. So if we play it back now, you can see it starts off really fast and then it transitions into a normal speed. If we were to reduce the length of this transition, we can take it from both ends down to about here. It's going to create a much harsher transition, so it's going to be really fast and jam straight into a normal speed playback. You can see we've still got a little bit of transition here, but nowhere near as much, so we do get that much sharper effect going for us. And you can do this as many times as you want, so if we wanted to slow down the last bit even more, we can hover over here with our mouse and press Shift B, and it's going to create another split in the retime controls, and then we can slow down this last bit. And going from normal speed to slow, I think transitions work a bit better than going from fast to normal. So we can keep this greyed out bar longer, in fact we can even stretch this out so the slow isn't too noticeable. We're just going to ease into that slowness. Then once you've added some read time effects, it's very important to make sure that you are aware and you choose an appropriate frame blending technique. If we go over into our retiming tools, you can see there's a video quality drop down box. We've got normal, frame blending and optical flow. When you stretch out a clip, this footage is only 25 frames a second, so as you stretch out a clip, it starts to repeat frames. For instance, if we just click here and we right arrow key to shuttle in between frames, you can see we're moving frames, but it's using the exact same image, and that's because it doesn't have any more media. So you've got a couple of options here. Frame blending is basically going to create a fade or a transition between the previous frame and the next frame, or optical flow is going to use them two frames and calculate an in-between frame, which is obviously a lot more effective and powerful, but it doesn't always work that well. Whereas a fade between frames is creating a constant and consistent effect, but it doesn't look as good. Let's take a look at some of the other retiming effects inside of Final Cut Pro 10.1. So let's drag our clip and duplicate it over to here. We we'll press Command R. You can see by duplicating the clip, it's got the exact same effects applied to it. So we're going to get rid of that by clicking on this retime tools and then choosing reset speed and that's basically going to return the clip back to normal ready to go again. Final Cut's got a cool new jump cut feature which basically lets you trim off sections of frames at marker heads so if we were to go through this clip and press M for marker and say M for marker here, M for marker here, M for marker here and then if we go into the retime tools, you can see we've got jump cut and markers, and we can choose three frames, five frames, 10 frames, 20 frames, or 30 frames. Basically, what it's gonna do is using retime rather than edit points, it's going to trim off 10 frames or however many frames we specify between the marker and taking the frames out of the material to the right of that marker. And it's going to do it at every one of the markers we created. So from here to say about here, maybe is 10 frames. From here to here. From here to here and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and apply that effect and see what we get. 
Okay, so you can see that the way it's done this, like I said, is using the actual retime tools. The cool thing about that is that we've created some cool jump cuts, but the clip again is still one isolated clip. If we play it back, You can see the jump cuts are working pretty well, but they're not very noticeable. So let's go ahead and up them to, say, 20 frames. So stylistically, this might work well for something like an action sequence. Obviously, when you've got a car pulling up, it's not the most exciting, but it does add some kind of punch to the scene. And once you throw in some music, jump cuts really work really well i'm a big fan of jump cuts um, i use them for audition my short film as sherry's running up the stairs um, so you might want to check that out for an example of how you can use jump cuts creatively now let's take a look at the instant replay tool inside of final cut pro 10.1 so let's say that this shot of this car pulling up was actually way more exciting we might want to show an instant replay so let's go ahead and do the same thing again we're going to duplicate the clip mm -hmm. to do this we're going to hold down option or alt and drag the clip to the right then we're going to reset the clip by going up to the retime tools and choosing reset speed then with the clip selected we're going to go ahead and choose instant replay we can choose 50%, which is basically the speed. So we want to play back this clip at 50% speed following the clip. So what it's going to do is create a copy of your clip to the right of your clip. So after you've played your clip, it's then going to show an instant replay at whichever speed you chose. So for instance, 50% speed. And by default, instant replay comes with a really cool title that you probably really wanted. Also what's cool about it, again like all the retime clips, is that even though it's created a copy of the clip next to mm -hmm. the existing clip, it's also made it so that it's all one clip. So the instant replay is part of the actual original clip, which makes it really easy to move around in your timeline. The instant replay becomes part of the footage, which is really cool. And lastly, let's take a look at the hold frames feature inside of Final Cut Pro 10.1. Let's, uh, let's duplicate this clip once more by holding down Option, dragging to the right. And we're going to reset the clip again. And now we're going to use what's called the Hold option. So we're going to scrub to a point we want to hold on, let's say about here. And then press the shortcut Shift H. You can see that what it does is it creates a freeze frame, it stops the audio, at the point that we specify. So this could work really cool for something like titles. We can drag this out as long as we wanted to so that the it holds on the freeze frame for even longer. We could even get rid of the rest of the material so that it just ends on the hold frame. And then you might have some kind of cool title. Let's just throw in a lower third on top and let's line it up with the start of the hold. So you're going to come in, maybe you're introducing a character, and then bam, the shot freezes, and we've got ourselves a title where to go. So that's a quick overview of some of the cool new retime features inside of Final Cut Pro 10.1. Hopefully this was useful. Remember to request tutorials below. There's going to be a lot more coming over the next few days. I've been moving today, so hence there's only been one today. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys soon.